All right, so in the last four lessons that we have in this semester, we're going to cover the four different market structures. And in today's lesson, we're going to focus on perfect competition. Now, in order to understand perfect competition, we have to go to two of the dimensions of market structure. We're going to talk about market power, which remember is an issue of whether uh, an industry or whether a company is a price setter or a price taker. And also we're going to talk about uh, product differentiation, which means whether the product is heterogeneous or homogeneous. Now these two concepts are very related to each other. We're primarily talking about price setters and price takers right now, but we're going to understand that by understanding the products that are produced, whether the products are very different, heterogeneous, or whether they're very much the same, homogeneous. Okay, And so here's the argument that I want to make. So if you want to write down one big idea from this particular uh, segment of the lesson, it's this. It's that price setters have a downward sloping demand curve, but Price takers have a horizontal demand curve. And I know that sounds weird because this whole semester, every time we look at a market graph, we see a downward sloping demand curve. And if the demand curve is horizontal, then that means that there is no relationship between price and quantity. And I'm going to argue that for perfect competition, that is exactly the case, that perfect competitors don't have a relationship between the quantity they produce and the price they charge. And the reason for that is because perfect competitors, they don't get to change their price. They are price takers. And, I, and that's where I'm ultimately going in this first part of, the, uh, of this lesson. All right, so here's, the, here's how I'm going to make the argument. We're going to talk about two different kinds of products. Up here we have uh, we have uh, frozen produce. We're going to talk about frozen corn. I don't know if you like frozen corn, but I like frozen corn. I mean, I don't eat it frozen. I put it in the microwave or I you know, boil it in a pan. But I like to cook up some frozen corn and put some butter and salt on it. That's good stuff. And then the other one is uh, passenger vehicles, okay? So personal vehicles. Um, now, you're probably familiar with the Honda Civic. The Honda Civic is a very popular car. I actually drive a Honda Civic. Uh, but uh, back in the late 1980s and the early 1990s, Ford had a model of vehicle called the Tempo, the Ford Tempo. And so we're going to compare the Honda Civic and the Ford Tempo, okay? And here's basically what I'm saying is uh, that homogeneous products, okay? So if you go buy frozen corn from Publix or buy frozen corn, let's say, Green Giant brand, now, I promise you that they're going to want you, you know, Publix wants you to buy their frozen corn and Green Giant wants you to buy their frozen corn. But... Um, you know, it's really, in my opinion, it's really hard to argue why Green Giant frozen corn is different than Publix frozen corn. Maybe you can tell the difference. I've had students say they can tell the difference, and that's fine. But generally speaking, uh, frozen corn is frozen corn, okay? And we call that a homogeneous product, okay? And what the argument that I'm going to make here is this, is that for homogeneous products, and you're going to want to write this down. I don't have a lot of space up here, but you write this down. For homogeneous products, all of the different producers of homogeneous products, they share one demand curve. They're all, it's, it's, an, it's a product demand curve for all of the producers of that one product. And here's an example of how, of, of why I'm going to make that argument. Because Let's just talk about demand. We could go into supply, but but and you, you could think it through yourself, but let's just talk about demand, okay? Let's say that people really want a lot of, they're really enjoying frozen corn, and the demand for frozen corn goes up. Well, if the demand for frozen corn goes up, it's very likely that you will see an increase in demand, which means a rightward shift of the demand curve, okay? So there's D prime for Publix frozen corn and for Green Giant frozen corn, 
okay? People are gonna, probably going to buy both of them. And there's, there are probably several interesting reasons, because people have more income, or because uh, corn is very popular during a certain time of the year. But you're probably going to see an increase in demand for both of them, because both of them, the products, are very homogeneous. And so their, mar their individual market graphs are going to behave very similarly. Therefore, for a homogeneous product, there is one demand curve for the, for the whole industry. For the entire industry, there is one demand curve. Okay? But now let's talk about passenger vehicles. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about the early 90s. So so uh, you can look this up yourself on Wikipedia if you want to. First of all, uh, if you took my macroeconomics class uh, or any macroeconomics class, you probably learned about uh, real GDP growth. You know how production in the economy can can go up a lot or not go up very much or it can actually decrease from one year to the next. 1992, I believe it was. Uh, 1992 or 1993, between 1992 and 1993, very good year. We had about 2 to 3 percent uh, real GDP growth. That's good for the economy, 2 to 3 percent. Let's go ahead and call it 3 percent because then into 1994, uh, uh, it, was, it, it was consistently growing, okay? So we had growth in the economy, okay? But in that year, or in those couple years, one year in particular, I want to say it was 19, uh, 1992 or 1993, the production and sale of Honda Civics went up by 16%. That's a lot. If production went up by 16%, that means people really liked the Honda Civic. That's an increase in the demand curve, right? But, in that same year, people disliked the Ford Tempo. In fact, the Ford Tempo had sort of a bad reputation by the time we got to the late 80s and early 90s. It had a reputation for kind of falling apart or needing a lot of repair, okay? And so by the last few years of the Ford Tempo, even though the economy was doing well and other vehicles were increasing in demand, the Ford Tempo actually saw a drop in demand. And so there was a decrease in the demand curve for Ford Tempos. And so if we have two products that are in the same industry, they provide the same basic utility. They, they, they are, for all intents and purposes, they are the same product just coming from a different producer. But if one of them in the same year is increasing in demand and the other one is decreasing in demand, then we can't really put them in the same industry demand curve because the products are heterogeneous. So when we investigate these things in microeconomics, because they're very different and the demand and the supply for them behave very differently, we give them separate demand curves. We investigate them as one company at a time or one product at a time instead of a whole industry. And so here's what I'm saying, that with homogeneous products, when I draw a supply and a demand curve, I'm drawing a supply and a demand curve for the entire industry of that product. But when we're going to talk about heterogeneous products, when I draw a supply and demand curve, I'm basically drawing a supply and demand curve just for that one product from one or two different sellers. Because sometimes you might have two sellers who sell the exact same product. But generally speaking, across, multiple, across the entire industry, you'll have lots of different products. And now that you understand that, we can try and get an understanding of price setters and price takers. All right, so now let's talk about why it's important for price takers to all have the same price, okay? Uh, so let's say that we have three different competitors of a homogeneous product. So this is one company and they produce 
frozen corn, let's say. This company also produces frozen corn, and this company also produces frozen corn. This is the individual demand curve, or, or theoretically, the individual demand curve for each one. They have a marginal revenue curve, and they also have a marginal cost curve, okay? So this producer of corn would decide how much to produce based on their where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, okay, because that's the profit maximizing quantity and we're assuming that they are rational so they want to produce the profit maximizing quantity. And so then let's say their price is right here. Let's say that that's a price of $7, okay, for, I don't know, a case, all right? Then we have this next producer, this competitor, and they're going to produce where their marginal revenue is equal to their marginal cost. And we'll go up to the demand curve and we'll come over and let's say that that's a price of $6 per case. And then this one down here, they're going to produce where their marginal revenue is equal to their marginal cost. Okay, but look at how high their price is. So their price, let's say, is $8 per case. Okay, so all three of these producers, they sell the exact same thing identical, and they're in the same area, where are you going to buy? Are you going to buy from this guy who's selling the same thing for $8? Are you going to buy from this guy who's selling the same thing for $6? Or are you going to buy from this guy who's selling the same thing for $7? Now, if you are rational, and remember that's one of our assumptions in studying uh, microeconomics, if you are rational, then you are going to buy from the seller that's selling for $6 because you'll get the same thing for less price. Ceteris paribus. They are all selling the same uh, product, the same size of package. Everything about it is the same. You're going to go to this guy with $6. Well, one of two things is going to happen. All right. In order for this guy to start selling some, he may lower his price to $6. But really, probably what's going to happen is because so many people are demanding this product for $6, this producer is going to run out of product because people are going to want to buy a lot at $6. And then there's going to be a shortage in the market. And so if we go over to the industry graph, and this is the supply curve and the demand curve for the overall industry, what's happening here is the price is too low in the market, $6. And quantity demanded, whoops, that's a Q, quantity demanded, and here's quantity supplied. Quantity demanded, or quantity supplied, is less than quantity demanded. And if, we, if you go back to uh, unit two, and remember that uh, when quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied, market forces will force the price to increase. And what's going to happen is the price will go up. The demanders will bid the price up. Oops, this is supposed to be an S here. Sorry. The, the demanders will bid the price up. And because the suppliers are having an increased price, uh, there will then be a higher supply. And when the price goes up, now this guy can sell some and this guy can sell some. Okay. So having different prices in different companies selling the exact same thing isn't going to work out because eventually the buyers are going to bid the price up and, and eventually all of them will go back to selling for the same price. Okay, And so uh, I just needed you to sort of see an example of why it doesn't work out for homogeneous products for different companies to sell at different prices. So price takers, they don't set the price ever. The market sets the price for them. How? How does the market set the price? Well, you already know this one. If this is the supply and demand curve, oh, excuse me, that's quantity, quantity, price. If this is the supply curve, this is all of the sellers of the same homogeneous product and this is all of the demanders for the same homogeneous product, well, the price is set by the market. Remember where we have the intersection? And this is going to be equilibrium price. That is how the price is set. And, what, and whatever the market sets, whatever market forces set as the price, that price is now the price 
that all the sellers are going to take. They are price takers of which price? Of the equilibrium price. So then how does the price change in the industry of a homogeneous product? Well, the price changes the same way you learned how the price changes when there's a shift in supply or demand. There will be an increase in price if the supply curve shifts to the left. If we have a decrease in supply, S prime, we will have an increase in price. If there is an increase in demand, so if demand increases, if the, the demand curve shifts to the right, there's D prime, look at that, there will be an increase in price. Increase in price here or increase in price here. So there's two ways for the price to go up in the market for a homogeneous product. The price that is taken by the price takers will be a higher price if, let's write this down, the price will go up, price goes, oops, go, go with, <laughs> price goes up if, if one of two things happens. If we have a, a decrease in supply or an increase in demand. So in the market for a homogeneous product, the price will go up if supply decreases in that market or if demand increases in that market. And to understand that, you're gonna to have to go back to, um, you're gonna to have to go back to lesson or unit two, uh, where we talk about the determinants of supply and the determinants of demand. All right, what about, uh, what about the price going down? All right, well, let's go ahead and draw a supply and demand curve here. And so over here, we're gonna say, the price goes down if, now this is in a, in a market with a homogeneous product where all the sellers are price takers, okay? The price will go down if, well, if demand shifts to the left, if we have a decrease in demand, right? So the demand curve shifts to the left, there's D prime, the price will go down. I forgot to put the original equilibrium price in, and also I made a diagonal dashed line there. Okay, there's equilibrium price, and here's the new price because demand went down. Look at that, we have a decrease in price. Or if supply goes up, if we have an increase in supply. So if supply shifts to the right, so we have a rightward shift of the supply curve, there's S prime, there's our new intersection right there. And whoops, let's come on over there. And we have a decrease in price. The equilibrium price has decreased. Why? Because supply increased. So in a market for homogeneous product in the industry, the price that is given to all the price takers, that price will go down if supply increases or if demand for that product decreases. Okay.